Okay, so Des, we were just talking before we had a, a little interruption there um, about George Glass taking his wife and his young daughter with him on his expedition. Well, Karen, that was an extraordinary thing to do. Life at sea was a very, very dangerous thing. His wife, Isabel, I think she was probably in her mid thirties at that time. So he put them on board their ship in London, went down the Thames, out into the Bay of Biscay, all down past Spain, along the coast of, uh, uh, of Africa. And a warrior came out of the bushes, armed with a big long spear and what looked like a scimitar, a sword with a bend in it. And he walked up to George's scout and he slaughtered him on the spot. Oh my goodness. Isabel and, and the 10 year old daughter. I was right. gonna say his daughter was only 12 or 10, yeah. wasn't she? Gosh. She was only 10, so, th so they're watching all of this. So they were all spooked at that stage and George desperately needed that signature. So he's a very, um, he never gave up. He waited a few days and then he, about 10 people went ashore and I guess when the locals saw 10 people coming ashore, they took it more seriously. Well, if that's the case. So the chief actually came and George got the signature he wanted. So now what he had to do is get that signature back to London. But at this stage, he didn't want his ship to move out of the area because that would look like he thought they were giving back the territory to the local chief who had just signed it away. So here was a peculiar decision to make. George decided he was going to get into one of the small boats they had on board, go up to the Canary Islands to pick up some food and get another smaller boat for exploration, but leave Isabel and his 10 year old daughter behind with some of his crew. Gosh. When he did that, somehow he made his way all the way up the coast and into the Canary Islands. And when he arrived, the Ireland's were Spanish at the time and they hated the British. And they saw this guy called George Glass coming ashore and they had heard rumors that he was going to set up a competing harbor down the coast. So they arrested him, threw him into jail, put him into a dungeon. In the meantime, Isabel and the daughter are back on the ship, not knowing what's going to happen. Now, will I continue to spoil the story? Will, will, I, will I go yeah. on? <laughs> okay. No, don't ruin the story, don't ruin the story but it, it doesn't come to a pleasant end for the family, does it? But it really is worth a read. I'm, I'm towards the end, so I can't wait to uh, to finish it, but because we've spoken, I know how the story goes. But what I, what I find quite eerie, when I first received this book, Des, when I opened yeah. it, the very first time I opened it, it just opened at the acknowledgements at the back and it landed yes. on, believe it or not, David Kelly, who's my husband, and Robert Kelly above it, his his brother, and I went all goosey. So the acknowledgements oh. are to, to a David Kelly who is um, a lecturer, and then a Robert Kelly who was a photographer. And I remember telling my husband that he was like, "Oh my God, that's a bit too bit too creepy." So obviously, that's you amazing. live in the area and you overlook the Muglins. What kind of response have you had from from locals that maybe you know that have family who would would have been around at that time? It's been wonderful, Karen. I suppose we would all be a bit to blame in that we don't know too much about our surroundings because we're too busy most of our lives. Yeah. And a lot of people had heard about pirates and the Muglins, but never knew anything about it. So yeah. it's, the local response has been fantastic. But also, um, I've done a fair bit of work on Facebook telling a lot of my friends about it. And at this stage, I have readers in 18 countries. The last one came in a few days ago in, in Barbados. Uh, in, in pirate wow. territory so uh, it's, it's been an amazing yeah. that that's it that's incredible so for our audience then murder mutiny and the muglins okay where can we purchase this fabulous book and it really is it's a hardback isn't it it's fabulous it is karen thank you and i even put a ribbon in it so that you can mark your pages properly i love that <laughs> but... i love that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the challenge is you have to remember the name of the book. So www.murdermutinyandthemuglins, M-U-G-L-I-N-S, dot shop. So if you put the dot shop at the end of that, instead of dot com, you'll get straight to where you can get it. Fabulous. Now, apart from being this wonderful author of this lovely book, you've had a really colourful career. But one thing you do love doing is water skiing, isn't it? You're a keen water skier and you used to commentate as well. 
the, that's right, Karen. I was um, the person responsible for the world body marketing and media, and that involved television and sat links and all of these things. But um, at one time, three of us set up a world series where we ran 17 events from Borneo to China to uh, the Middle East, whatever. And that became, it, it just took over our lives. But because television was such an important part of it, we actually packaged each stop that we did around the world. And we distributed those through all the sports networks. I think at one time we had over 800 um, affiliates picking it up around the world. Um, Sky Sports in this region, in the region we're talking oh, about now in the UK and Ireland. No. Okay, we froze again, again for a second. <laughs> so do you do okay. you still water ski now, Des? Well, I'm hoping to be back on the water in the next few weeks. There's a club I'm a chairman of, and it's only 20 minute drive from where I live in a beautiful 16 acre lake up in the Wicklow Mountains, south of Dublin. I hope to be, Karen. How beautiful. And do you mind sharing with us your age? I mean, you're still a keen water skier at your age. Well, only if you tell me your age as well. 21. I'm always 21. <laughs> <laughs> always. Well, Karen, I'm a bit older. I'll be 79 in November. Wow. And you and you are really great at your sport as well. And your your son is also a keen water skier, isn't he? Yeah, my son and my daughter um, both ski. But most of our friends are also skiers. And many of them are skiing at, at ages as old as I am. Because it's one of these sports that it never stops, really. But uh, you just have to keep yourself fairly physically fit. But it's uh, it's a fabulous sport. And what what I loved um, about what you were telling me when I was trying to explain my water skiing experience is you're saying it's not my fault that I couldn't get up. It's the guy driving the boat. Is that right? Absolutely. Because when you're trying to pull somebody over the edge of the water, you have to do this nice and gently. And you watch the person in the mirror to see are they coping with every little millimeter of that. And the last yeah. thing you do is hit the throttle and pull them out the front. So the reason you didn't get up was the driver's fault. It was nothing to do with you. Every time. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, well, Des, it's been smashing talking to you today. I hope the weather picks up for you in Dublin. I wish you all the best with the book, okay? Murder, Mutiny and the Mugglins. Thank you so much, Karen. And I wish you all the best for the future. And I hope your ankle repairs. I know you've got a bad ankle, haven't you? I hope that repairs soon and you're back on the water soon. Thank you, Karen. Hope to be back on the water in just a couple of weeks. So murder, mutiny and the mudlands. That's the story not to forget. Thank you so much, Excellent. Karen. Thank you. Take care. Oh, fabulous story there. So that was murder, mutiny and the mudlands. And that was by... Uh, Des and Des is a fantastic chap and that's his book there so that's it from me today authors and more and next week we have Kat Jane Massey with her book Living with Dolls so I'll see you then take care be inspired get motivated creative and believe that you can achieve whatever your goals may be Join me, Karen Kelly, each Tuesday for Authors and More with amazing guests sharing their journey to help get you where you need to be.